Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Olden Goldens. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. It means a lot to us. Tito Jackson, the founding guitarist of iconic 70s hitmakers, The Jackson 5, that featured a young Michael Jackson and is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, died Sunday after reportedly having a heart attack while driving. He was 70. His sons TJ, Terrell, and Taj Jackson, who make up the band 3T, posted the news on social media. We are shocked, saddened, and heartbroken, the trio wrote on Facebook. Our father was an incredible man who cared about everyone and their well-being. Some of you may know him as Tito Jackson from the legendary Jackson 5. Some may know him as Coach Tito, or some know him as Papa T. Nevertheless, he will be missed tremendously. Also featuring brothers Jermaine, Marlon, Jackie, and later Randy, the group blasted out of Indiana in 1969 with its first four singles all hitting number one. One on the Billboard Hot 100, I Want You Back, ABC, the Love You Save, and I'll Be There. Their next two singles, Mama's Pearl and Never Can Say Goodbye, reached number two in 1970. In all, the Jackson Five, later called the Jacksons, had 10 top 10 hits in the 1970s and another State of Shock in 1984. They also scored seven top 10 in the UK. The band's first four LPs all made the top five on the Billboard 200 in 1970, with their seminal Jackson 5 Christmas album topping the chart that December. They would score four more top 10 long players through 1984 in the U.S.-born Toriano Adderall Jackson on October 15, 1953. In Gary, Indiana, Tito Jackson was the second oldest in the group, which came together in the mid-60s under the watchful eye and heavy hand of their father, Joe Jackson. The group won an amateur talent competition at the Apollo Theater in 1967 and signed with Barry Gordy's enormously successful Motown Records in 1969, leading to their string of hits, which also included Dancing Machine, Shake Your Body, and Enjoy Yourself. Lead singer Michael was just 11 when the group broke out, and he would release the powerhouse solo albums Off the Wall and Thriller, solidifying his moniker as the king of pop, and growing more distant from the group. Michael and his brothers embarked on the massive victory tour of stadiums in 1984, and years later for a 30th anniversary concert, special recorded at Madison Square Garden in 2001. Michael Jackson died in 2009 at 50, and his brothers, along with sisters Latoya and Janet, attended his memorial at Staples Center in Los Angeles. Tito Jackson started a solo career in the early 2000s that included the albums Tito Time and Under Your Spell. He is survived by his three sons and nine grandchildren. Dolores Jackson, who married Tito in 1972 and is the mother of TJ, Terrell and Taj Jackson, died in 1994. Chad McQueen, who played Dutch in the first two Karate Kid films, appeared in about two dozen other movies and was the son of screen legend Steve McQueen has died at 63. He died Wednesday morning at his home in Palm Desert, according to his mother, Nylee Adams McQueen. His remarkable journey as a loving father to us, along with his unwavering commitment to our mother, truly exemplified a life filled with love and dedication, his children, Jeannie, Chase, and Madison, posted on Instagram. His passion for racing not only highlighted his exceptional talent, but also served as a way to honor his father's legacy a testament to the values instilled in him. McQueen was best known for playing Dutch in The Karate Kid and The Karate Kid 2, part of the original Cobra Kai dojo alongside Johnny Lawrence in the Sensei John Kreese. McQueen was the only one of the trio not to appear in the Cobra Kai TV series episode where all they reunited. Hayden Schlossberg, one of the creators and EPs on Netflix's Cobra Kai, tweeted today that the producers wanted McQueen to reprise his role in the episode. We tried to get him in Cobra Kai and unfortunately couldn't make that work, but we had fun conversations with him, he wrote on X. Karate Kid Cobra Kai fans will always remember his wild character, Dutch. Born on December 28, 1960 in Los Angeles, McQueen's other big screen credits include Fever Pitch, 
New York Cop, Jimmy Hollywood, Paper Trail, Surface to Air and Fall, The Price of Silence, serving as producer on the last three. He also guested in the 1980s TV series V and Jesse Hawks and guested occasionally on talk shows. McQueen is listed as an executive producer on the treasure hunt film Yucatan, a longtime passion project of his father's that is in early development at Netflix from producers Robert Downey and Susan Downey under their Team Downey banner. Steve McQueen's vision involved a story about a renegade salvage expert's search for Mayan treasure in the Yucatan Peninsula, with him taking the lead role. The younger McQueen and Warner Brothers exec Lance Sloan, a family friend, began development on the project two decades ago. Warners had tried for several years to find a movie in the nearly 1,700 pages of notes and storyboards compiled by Steve McQueen and discovered in a trunk long after his death in 1980 had McQueen's credits also include executive producing and appearing in two 2010's documentaries about his father. I am Steve McQueen and Steve McQueen, the man in Le Mans. Partly raised in Malibu, McQueen developed an affinity for racing from an early age while growing up on the set of his father's films and riding dirt bikes with his father near their home in Palm Springs. Already riding dirt bikes, he began auto racing at the age of 10 and practiced on a kids-only track created on the set of his father's 1971 film, Le Mans. By age 12, the younger McQueen won his class in the World Mini Grand Prix. His racing career was cut short when McQueen sustained life-threatening injuries in a warm-up session for the Daytona International Speedway's Rolex 24 event. He has suffered a broken lower leg and multiple vertebrae and rib fractures, surviving but unable to ever race again. Most recently, he appeared in the 2020 documentary A Life of Endless Summers, The Bruce Brown Story. The elder McQueen helped finance Brown's Oscar-nominated 1972 motorcycle documentary on any Sunday. That film also featured the great escape star, British actor Kenneth Cope, a popular TV and film star in the 1960s and 70s thanks to leading appearances in Randall and Hopkirk and Coronation Street, has died. He was 93. Cope's former agent Sandra Chalmers of the Artist Partnership announced that he died at his home in the northern seaside town of Southport in Sefton, Liverpool, the area where he was born in 1931. Rennie Lister, Cope's wife of 63 years, and family members, including actor daughter Martha Cope, were by his side. He is also survived by children Nick and Mark. Chalmers said Cope was an incredible icon of British TV and film. Cope and Lister met in 1961 when they both joined the cast of long-running ITV Soap Coronation Street. He played petty crook Jed Stone as a semi-regular through the early and mid-1960s. He later returned to the role after an absence of 42 years. He honed his craft in repertory with the Bristol Old Vic and made his first appearance on television in 1952, playing a musician in a TV film adaptation of Shakespeare's The Two Gentlemen of Verona as a musician. The camera liked him, and he performed a string of roles throughout the 1950s. The 60s proved to be a breakthrough decade for him, with the double whammy of him playing in Coronation Street and starting in 1962, appearing for a year with David Frost, Millicent Martin, Roy Kinnear, David Kernan, Willie Rushton, and Lance Percival on This Was the Week That Was, a seminal late-night satirical show that aimed its sharp wit at the establishment. This was the week that was quickly became essential Saturday night viewing. The BBC show dared to highlight the murkier goings-on in political life, particularly salacious political scandals causing some politicians and prominent public figures to demand that it be taken off the air. The furor only propelled Cope's career. He went on to play roles in the popular show of the day, including Z Cars, The Avengers, and We Have Ways of Making You Laugh. The celebrated sketch show written by Frank Muir and Dick Vosberg. In the late 1960s, the producer Monty Berman came up with an idea for a show titled Randall and Hopkirk called My Partner the Ghost in the U.S., about two private detectives, Jeff Randall, played by Mike Pratt, and Marty Hopkirk, played by Cope. The twist being that Cope's Hopkirk is murdered but returns as a ghost in a cream-colored suit to help his former partner bring the killer to justice. It took a little while to catch on, but the show eventually became a hit for the old ATV and LWTITV stations. 
The show went on to become highly influential, and it was revived decades later with Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer. Cope also appeared in movies Carry On, At Your Convenience, and Carry On Matron, although he was uncredited for a small role in 1964's Carry On Jack. He also appeared in Rentatic Juggernaut, the film version, TV comedy George and Mildred, and Captives. James Earl Jones, the revered actor who voiced Star Wars villain Darth Vader, starred in Field of Dreams and many other films and Broadway shows and is an EGOT winner, died this morning at his home in Dutchess County, New York. He was 93. Widely regarded as among the world's great stage and screen actors, Jones is one of the few entertainers to have won the EGOT, though his Academy Award was honorary. Jones has received two Primetime Emmy Awards, a Daytime Emmy, a Spoken Word Grammy Award in 1977, and three Tony Awards. The actor amassed nearly 200 screen credits during his brilliant 60-year career, starting some early 60s TV guest roles in Stanley Kubrick's 1964 classic Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. He probably is best known for his voice role as the dastardly Darth Vader in George Lucas's original Star Wars trilogy, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. He also reprised the villainous role in Star Wars, Episode III, Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, Star Wars, Episode IX, The Rise of Skywalker in TV's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Star Wars Rebels. Movie fans will remember such chilling, immortal Vader quotes as, When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. I find your lack of faith disturbing. And of course, no, I am your father. Also among Jones's best loved roles is Terrence Mann, the reclusive 1960s author who reluctantly teams with Kevin Costner's Ray Kinsella to unlock the latter's visions of baseball lore in Field of Dreams. Based on the 1982 novel Shoeless Joe, the film from writer-director Phil Alden Robinson tugged, no, yanked, at heartstrings with its sweet nostalgia, high concept plot, father-son dynamics, and general excellence. It earned three Oscar nominations, including Best Picture. It lost to Driving Miss Daisy, a film whose Broadway adaptation starred Jones as Hope Colburn, the character played by Morgan Freeman on the big screen. Jones also voiced The Lion King's Mufasa in both the 1994 animated pic and 2019 hybrid remake. Among his dozens of other films are the bingo long-traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings, A Piece of the Action, Conan the Barbarian, Soul Man, Coming to America, The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, Sneakers, The Sandlot, Clear and Present Danger, Judge Dredd, Gang-Related, and Coming Second America. He also lent his sonorous voice to the famous This is CNN promo campaign for the cable news network and recurring as the narrator on Third Rock from the Sun. He also appeared on The Simpsons three times. Breaking news of the day. Beloved actor Bill Murray, known for his iconic roles in Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day, celebrates his 73rd birthday while reflecting on a remarkable life filled with both triumphs and challenges. Rising to fame in the 1970s on Saturday Night Live, Murray's journey has not always been smooth marked by personal battles and physical setbacks. Before his breakthrough, Murray struggled with severe mental health issues, once admitting he felt ready to give up. In a 2014 interview, he recounted a low point early in his career when after a rough performance in Chicago, he was overwhelmed with despair. A solitary walk by Lake Michigan led him to the Art Institute of Chicago, where he found solace in the painting, The Song of the Lark. The image of a young girl facing a new day inspired him, pulling him from one of his darkest moments. Murray's career has also faced physical challenges, including a notable injury on the set of the 2017 Ghostbusters reboot. Despite these obstacles, Murray remains a symbol of perseverance and humor, endearing him even more to his fans. As he celebrates another year, Murray's story continues to inspire proving that resilience and laughter can triumph over adversity.